apparently I needed to get an injection and the nurse in charge of the place decided to give me the injection. I think shortly after the injection, I couldn't walk shortly after. It's time to talk. I don't know what life has thrown to you and I don't know what you have made out of it. Today I have with me a very beautiful young doctor. Life has thrown so many things to her and yet she's fulfilling her dreams. Join me as make welcome, Dr. Joanna. Hi, it's good to have you today. Pleasure is all mine. The way you walk. Were you born like this? No. What happened to you? So I think at age four, almost five, I felt sick, very sick. My mom came home and then decided to take me to the hospital. But the closest one was just a clinic behind our house. So she took me to the clinic to seek for health care. Um, apparently, I needed to get an injection. And the nurse in charge of the place decided to give me the injection. I think shortly after the injection, I couldn't walk shortly after. But then, I think then, it was in the night, they thought it was because I was not well, I was very weak. So my mom sent me home to sleep. The following day at dawn, she woke me up to the bathroom to take me to a bigger hospital for a checkup. So when she woke me up, she asked me to get up and I told her I couldn't get up. Mm. No. So she thought I was faking it. I was being a child. So she spanked me so hard. Then I started crying and told her that I actually really can't get up. It's not intentional. And then that was when my mother attempted putting me on my feet about three different times. And then I fell back down to the floor. So after that, she knew that I really wasn't faking it. I really couldn't get up, I really couldn't walk. And that's how my life changed. You know, it amuses me because I don't understand why in Africa, like in Nigeria, when someone is sick, the first thing they minister is injections. Because I know before I lost my first son, he was so little, he was a premature child. I took him to the hospital and they put him on injection. And I remember I was crying. Why do they minister? Because when you go outside the country, they don't give injections like that. They don't give. That's the last thing they do. They give you medication. Now, why do Africans always give injections? So, I, I don't know from where you are coming from, but yeah. in my um, country and where I practice, we only give injections when, it's a, when it is it is necessitated, yes. So usually, if the patient comes in very sick, um, you would want to pass an IV line. An IV line just means that you are getting access into the bloodstream. So that whatever medication you are delivering goes directly into the, into the access, yes. But hardly would you see us giving an injection, unless, of course, the medication you are giving says that it is an IM medication or it's a subcut medication. So those ones can't go directly into the bloodstream. They need to go into the muscles or they need to go under the skin. Then that is when we give an injection. But even now, I hardly see us giving injections unless the medication specifically states that it is an intramuscular or subcut medication. That is when we give an injection. You know, it's because you're not a doctor. Yes. Because before now, you didn't know better. No. My own opinion, what I think is that it's not okay because I've met some people, you know, that were given vaccines, that right. were probably expired, and you know, our parents didn't know better. Okay. And then most of these vaccines were not kept in the right condition. And then people are affected. And it's a lifetime problem. Yeah. And nothing is done to these people. Nothing is done to these hospitals. These people just walk on the street and someone's life is gone. Yeah. How can this thing change? So I think it has to be start from individual efforts. Because I went through it personally. So when I'm passing an IV access for any child or any person, I'm careful because I know what it can do. So you as an individual need to educate yourself and understand that it could happen to you. It could happen to somebody close to you. It could happen to your child. It could happen to your mother. So when you are in the position taking care of somebody that's sick, think about it in the first place that this could be my family member. How do I want to treat this person? Then however you want your member, your family member to be treated is the exact same way you should, you treat, should that treat that person. person. Yes. So I have always thought when I'm, at, I'm attending to any patient, this could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my cousin. I approach them with that perspective. Then I make sure that I give them the best I can give them because I would want any person I'm related to to be given the best to out there. So it starts with an individual perspective 
with a change of mind and the media collective efforts may be some rules and regulations from the government governing how to do these things yes we'll be right back catch up on our weekly programs on the tiny grounder show from pillow talk to talk shows and kitchen sessions the streets are not left out as we also engage via our street hangouts and student dialogue. Entertainment at its peak with music star and sports review with a host of other exciting programs. Tune into our YouTube channel and all the social media channels at the Kind Crumble Show to stay engaged all day long. Welcome back. I've been chatting with this very, very energetic doctor. Now, I just want to ask this question because, now, was it at age four, after this ugly incident, that you decided that I'm going to be a doctor? So, when I was younger, it was one of those things, I don't know about Nigeria, but in Ghana, when you are in kindergarten, nursery, primary school, you're always asked by your teachers, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be? So, for me, it started off as a childhood dream, dream where I always said, I wanted to be a medical doctor. And then my second plan was, if I don't become a medical doctor, I want to be a newscaster. <laughs> because I felt maybe the way I talk was nice yes. and my voice. Yes. So I really wanted to do that in the medicine business. But uh, in, in my childhood, it was just a childhood dream. I think it cemented that I want to be this when I grew up. I just, when I heard my story from my parents that I ended up like this because of an injection, I did not want somebody else to end up like this. Like that? Yes. So you wanted to do the correction yes, I wanted by to change being that. a voice? Yes. Yeah. I wanted to change that because I had gone through so much discrimination, so much mocking. <sighs> I had been chastised one too many times that when I grew up, I decided I didn't want another child to have to so go through what I went through. Now, when you look into the mirror, as a, as a growing teenage girl that, you know, begin to understand, oh, I'm beautiful. And when you go out to school, all that kids are not like that. And you know this is not how you were born. Yeah. How were you feeling? So in my early days, I didn't think it was a problem because I used to be exempted from a lot of things. So I thought it was a plus because you don't have to sweep, you don't have to do anything. So I thought, oh, well, this is a plus. I don't get to work. I'm special. I'm like <laughs> right? But then when my hormones kicked in, when I entered my teenage years, that was when I started to notice that I was different because um, a typical incident that I remember from my teenage days was in class six, primary six. Uh, my classmates used to tease each other, this is your boyfriend, this is your girlfriend, that kind of thing. And I remember being teased with one particular guy and he was like, no, he doesn't want to be teased with me. I think. It was those times it started hitting. Because when I was younger, people didn't want to play with me. I used to wear a leg support on my leg. So they didn't want to play with me because it was weird. They don't want to come around me. So I was always alone. But my teenage years was when it hit me that this isn't a plus. This, this is definitely a minus. Yeah. yeah. Now talking about boyfriend, I mean, do men come to you? Yes. So you had boyfriends? Yes. Or you have a boyfriend? Currently no. But you're married? No, I'm single. So you're still looking for? Yes. I'm waiting for the one. <laughs> but so far, what kind of men are drawn to you? So, um, I've met good ones. Yes, I've met good ones. But there is one thing that I've noticed runs through all. Yeah. Which is, people assume they know all I'm about when they see me. They just assume that um, she's not going to be fun. She's going to be boring because, I mean, have you seen the way she walks? People just assume they know all I'm about. It takes a few of them who say, you know what, I still want to be this girl's friend, who get to know me to realize that, oh, she is Jesus. full of energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then that is when they are thoughts and perspective. I remember one of my friends clearly telling me that when I first saw you, I just thought you'd be boring, you'd keep to yourself, you wouldn't want to engage. But when I started talking to you, I was like, hey, you know, who is this girl that talks like this? I'm like, you don't judge me based on my appearance. Take your time to get to know me. But that's a problem. A lot of men don't take the time to get to, to know, know you. But it's, yeah, it's because most times the people that are having physical, most of them, most of most of the people, something to say, yeah. are angry. Yeah. 
you know, yes. like the the impression is mm -hmm. like this person is an angry person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not because of they're angry. Mm -hmm. The way people treat yes. them. Yes. They so when they meet you, they don't know if you're going to be nice to them. So that's the problem. People mm -hmm. judge you, not knowing who you are. Yeah. And then you are responding, you know, because yes. of the reaction mm -hmm. you've been getting from yeah. people. Now, what kind of man are you expecting? <laughs> so first of all, I am a Christian. So I'll say a God-fearing man. Number one, that cannot be compromised on. You have to know God. You have to love God. You have to push me closer to God. Because I don't want you to have to come and come and, and then send me, me to hell. No, no, no. We are going to heaven together. together. <laughs> so that's very important. And then I think I want a man that understands me. Because in as much as I am strong, there are certain things that no matter what I You're do... You're the man I'm giving more strength. Yes. There are yeah. certain things that I can't do. I may try, but there are certain things I've come to understand that it's okay if I can't do them. Yeah. I need a yeah. man that would understand that, you know what, it's fine. If she can't do that, I can't I do can that. I can do it, yeah. Yes. I need a man that will compliment me in places where I'm weak and, you know, be my support in places where I'm strong. So um, that, that, that is what is Yeah, the balance, like yes. For everyone. Yes. yes. And I want a rich man. <laughs> Very important. A wealthy man. However, I am okay starting life with a man with a vision. With a good vision. A good vision. Yeah. Even if he doesn't have now, I am quite aware that he has a plan, a laid out plan that I know that if I support this man, if I take this journey with this man, he's going to end up in a better place and it's going to be good for me. So I don't mind starting off with a man that is, you know, quote unquote broke, but a man that has a vision. That I know that if I support this vision, it's gonna eventually pay off. Yes. We'll be right back. Catch up on our weekly programs on the Tiny Crowner Show, from Kilo Talk to talk shows and kitchen sessions. The streets are not left out as we also engage by our street hangouts and student dialogue. Entertainment at its peak with music star and sports review with a host of other exciting programs. Tune into our YouTube channel and all the social media channels at the Kind of Show to stay engaged all day long. Talking about if the guy is broke, it doesn't matter if he has a vision. You know, women must stand we're easily deceived. Yes. Because sometimes you think, oh my God, I'm in love, <laughs> and it's butterflies. <laughs> you understand? Yes. A woman can actually give everything she has to support a man. Yeah. And 80%, the men always turn the woman down. Yeah. Now, if you meet a man that is not okay, are you ready to support him financially? When you say not okay, as in this is a man with the good dreams, like you said. Okay, with a good vision. With a good vision. Yeah. And he's showing you, and, I love and, you. Yes, and this is a man I'm attracted to. Yeah, I need support. I want to go, probably, I want to go to America <laughs> to finish my school. Right. I want, will you do, will you take the risk? And he is somebody that I find attractive and somebody that I am convinced loves me. Exactly. And loves God. Because you see, if a man loves God, there is, it's very difficult for him to disappoint you as a person, unless he lied about loving God. No, I'm asking for yes. Will you support them? Yes, I will. But it's based on the... On the name of yes. loving God. Yes. Because I feel like... want you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A man that loves God mm -hmm. is not a guarantee man. Really? A man that fears God. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. A man yes. that fears God. A man God. that yes. fears God. And I agree. And a little bit of... Yes, I agree. Conscience. I a agree. little bit of conscience. I definitely agree. Conscience. Because a man can love you. Yeah. And then he's not real. That's true. Because I, I, I wanted to know how far you can go. Okay. So will you give your everything I can. to support? If I and he's a man that fears God, if I can, yes. Oh no, no concrete arrangement. When you say concrete arrangement, like what I'll say is this: like you're my sister. Yeah. And you come to me. Mm -hmm. I met Peter. Okay. Oh, he loves me. Okay. He's been around for six years. Okay. Or oh, for two years. Two years he has not engaged. <laughs> Two years he's still promising and coming to your house <laughs> and taking you everywhere, meeting his family, and then you're giving him all you say. Is Peter is Peter a snail? Why would Peter date me for two years without what engaging happens? me? It does. I would say that for a woman there should be a commitment. 
Okay. The man should either pay you agree, down, but, marry yes. you. But I wouldn't date you for two years without any commitment and I'll get up and commit my finances. That, that wouldn't be very... But what would you say to women that are good? Because a lot of women are yeah. actually beautiful yeah. and this is happening to them. It's actually it's sad. It's hard to yeah. actually... When you are in the game of love, it's uh. difficult to see. <laughs> they say love is blind, you don't, don't they? <laughs> It's people around you that yeah, are that actually you. see what. And when they come to you to wash your eyes, you're angry with them. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. So we never did you think oh, all the time. Yeah, all the time. So, so how will you overcome this kind of situation? Personally, yeah, I haven't been in this kind of situation. So I feel like whatever I say might actually be excuse me to say nonsense to somebody who has been through this. Because mm -hmm. I try not to pass judgments or opinions on things that i haven't personally experienced because i feel like if i have an opinion on something it should be something i have experienced and even when i have experienced it the way i would deal with it is different from the way the other person would exactly. so i shouldn't be quick to judge exactly. but what i can say is if it happened to me i have given him my own my finances my everything and then it still ended up in nothing he betrayed me went in for somebody else i'm not gonna lie it would hurt like mad i'd probably be considered probably dying but if there is one thing i have learned from the heartbreaks i've had over the years with time i started telling myself this too shall pass because mm -hmm. i realized that no matter what i went through after some time it got better so no matter what i go through even my last heartbreak i just kept telling myself this too shall pass can even when i'm crying can you, can you share your heartbreak the last yes time? Wow. <laughs> uh, i met this gentleman it was all roses and nice. Initially, I didn't have any thoughts of dating him because I felt like I wasn't attracted to him. It's always those ones that you think you're not attracted to that it's always ends up bad. But so, he was good looking. Oh, yes, yes. But initially, he really wasn't somebody I thought I would date. Yeah. I was interested in the friendship. He and was eventually, classy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was, was not mine. low class. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so eventually, I started liking this person. I'm somebody who is very vocal about my thoughts and opinions so i made him aware that i'm i think i'm starting to like you and then this person tells me it's complicated you know i came from an, a relationship it's really not settled and so many things so i was like okay you know what i'm going to give you the benefits of the doubt go ahead and settle it over months whatever it was wasn't still settled then this gentleman told me he was traveling to Kumasi for a bit up in the to me he actually went to see the, <laughs> the I don't even know what that's called had the ex-girlfriend and I don't even know what that's called but we had a relationship or a situation because yeah, it was quite confusing yeah very confusing and um when I found out that he actually went stayed there for like a week with that with the lady came back and behaved as if nothing had happened at some point dated another person around me was sleeping with a person when i found out about that too it was the verbal abuse the emotional blackmail the gaslighting or the gaslighting like proper gaslighting to the point that you begin to think everything is your fault mm. Mm. narcissist i've never met a human being in my life that is as narcissistic as that, as that human being. It was later on in whatever we had that I started to, you know. Put the process together. Right? Again. And then I realized that now this is a narcissist. If I allow this person, it's he's gonna put me life. on a pedestal and leave me in a place that I don't want to be. But what I can say is that it was one of the worst things I have been in. I came out broken. Like really, cause the words he used broke me. I remember telling my friend, my best friend these words and she was like, no. No, no, what no human being would say, say that. that. What kind of words did he say? So he said something like, What makes you think I like you? I don't even know why you think that, but I'd rather choose the other girl over you. If you keep thinking that she came to mess up whatever you and I had, I'm sorry, but you came to mess up what she and I had. This is just the icing, the, the tip of the iceberg. But those what i remember crying from like in the night till at dawn when i came out of that i kept telling myself this too shall pass i can't share everything that went yeah. on on camera but yeah. what i can say is that yeah. i was broken but i decided that you know this too shall pass 
every time I'm crying, every time I remember, every time it keeps ringing, I keep telling myself, this too shall pass. Because eventually, it will pass. You're so beautiful. Thank you. You don't have a makeup on. No. You're so beautiful. Thank you. Your cheeks, your face structure, for real. Thank you. I, now, if you see a guy that is your friend, you know, that like you've been around for a while, yeah. and you know he's not in a relationship, you know he's not married, he's available, would you ask him? If I'm interested in it, yes. I'm very, very verbal about it. Well, not too directly, like you can just... Oh, I am very direct. So, so you can ask him, like, yes. I like you. Yes. I mean, I'm, like, I mean, yes, I'm very direct too. like that, but I currently am not attracted to any of my friends. I see them purely as friends, yes. But if I end up being attracted to any of them, yes, I am that vocal that I would be able to tell him that, you know what, I like you. Would you like to go out with me? Because you're actually very beautiful. Thank you. A man that is going to say, stay with you will actually be Thank you. a blessed person. Amen. Honestly. <laughs> because people don't get it. Yeah. You know, they, they think like you have to get this, you understand, structure. Mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. like we think yeah. you have to get a six pack <laughs> man. And this six pack <laughs> man don't stay. <laughs> this pack <laughs> guy don't stay. He's every woman's dream. Yeah. And when they realize that, they mess up. Mm -hmm. They feel that too much. Yeah. I want to see where women, you know, can begin to stand up and say, you know what? If a man feels he's handsome and it's too much and he's putting it to your face, you tell him to help with you. <laughs> no, it's true. That's true. And walk away yeah. and get someone better than him. For your peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Because it takes a woman that is independent yeah. to have her gains. You know, she yeah. has our resources mm -hmm. is better but when she's enslaved she doesn't have nothing that is the problem she's not become like a slave to this mm -hmm. guy but if women should wake up if your man treats you like a nobody and he feels it's too much for you like you're not his standard tell him to help and walk away <laughs> i'm saying that but i agree true. so what will be your last words um my last word will always be encouragement. To anybody watching this, to anybody going through something, be it relationship, be it financial, be it physical wise, whatever you're going through, it is not the end of your life. It is not the end for you. Trust me, this too shall pass. When it gets tough, just know that the light is just about to come. I know there are days you cry, you can't sleep, restless, thinking because you don't even know when the next meal or the next thing is going to come from but trust me this too will definitely most definitely pass and when it does find me say hi, hi, say hi. <laughs>